Welcome back to Cal Lutheran's student news publication, The Echo's bi-weekly podcast. This is Caroline Ason, the current editor-in-chief. Returning to the podcast today is Kennedy, a junior communication major with an emphasis in journalism and an Echo reporter. Kennedy covered the Western Association of School and Colleges visit to Cal Lutheran and what improvements have been made to the campus as well as what is still left to improve. What is WASC and why were they at Cal Lutheran? So California Lutheran University is part of the Western Association of Schools and Colleges, the Senior College and University Commission. So the Western Association of Schools and Colleges is has the acronym WASC, W-A-S-C, and then the other part, the Senior College and University Commissions is W-S-C-U-C. So basically, they give accreditation to our school so we could continue to be a university. And so their visit to Cal Lutheran this year was kind of different than how it usually is just because they wanted to check up on some of the things that we were marked down for in our last report. So in our last report, we got criticized, or Cal Lutheran got criticized on diversity issues, lack of resources for graduate students, marginalized groups, equal staff representation, and creating clear consequences for inappropriate behavior. So they documented all these criticisms and such back in December in 2020, and with the pandemic and such, they weren't able to come back and check up on how the university has been doing. So that's just some background information on what WSCUC is and why they were visiting Cal Lutheran. What were some of the concerns the commission brought up about the university? So like I had said previously, there were diversity issues resource issues for graduate students in the earlier December 2020 report. However, for the current report, the one recently done in 2022, the biggest issue documented was finding a metric system in which to evaluate the school, whether that be through surveys and stuff, just to see how student satisfaction and staff satisfaction is faring. In a Zoom interview, one of the people that worked for WSCUC kind of said that another one of Cal Lutheran's major issues is taking action to address the large number of open positions and challenges with faculty and staff. And there's issues in trusting senior leadership here on campus. What are some of the improvements to the university following these concerns? So President Lori Varlada made a lot of statements about how the school is changing and trying to become more diverse. I know that there have been meetings with student organizations such as Pride Club and other affinity groups to address representation issues. And there's been resources, grants, spaces, and diversity programs started to help with this issue. And two large federal grants have been allocated to our diversity programs. And then I know that our affinity groups and the administration have been working together to um, create a multi-purpose space. So in the student union, we have the Alexander Twilight Legacy of Black Excellence, which is a multi-purpose space for clubs and such. I also know that the hiring process, at least for Calu, has diversified. Because, as President Lori Varlotta said, all the new hires that we've had the past year or so, more than half identify as people of color, so that has diversified the staff and faculty. And they have not only addressed diversity issues, they've also addressed issues involving the graduate program here at Calu. I know that there's been change to offer students uh, access to a writing studio, peer writing consultants, and literature reviews which previously students didn't have access to. Praise was given to the university. What were some of the things that they mentioned? Our diversity on campus has gotten a lot more better than it has in previous years, whether it be from hiring staff or starting new diversity program initiatives, that's been really successful. The graduate program has gotten more resources And um, overall, I think the university is really just trying to address the issues that were brought up in the 2020 report. So many of those issues that were addressed have been changed and or 
the university is working to find a solution to whatever issues we had in the previous December 2020 report. Were there additional concerns brought up during this visit? If so, how does the university plan to address these concerns? So I know uh, one of the things that got brought up in the December 2020 report were, was that faculty and staff felt very marginalized. Certain communities felt like they weren't getting enough representation and it wasn't the faculty wasn't diverse enough and there were just issues with campus culture and such. So it never specified in the most recent report if those issues got solved or not, but I know that was a big concern in the past report. And it is interesting that it wasn't really touched upon in the new report. Is there anything else the listeners should know? Basically, Cal Lutheran obviously didn't do that poorly on the past visit because we've been offered a 10-year contract for accreditation. Obviously, WSUC WASC, they're going to make sporadic visits to the campus because that's what they do anyways, but so far we've scored pretty well. There have been many initiatives on campus to better the institution as a whole, and the administration team aims for continued collaboration with students and staff members and cultivating a strong sense of community with Lutheran values. And while there remains areas for improvement, Cal Lutheran has developed in ways that promote inclusivity, diversity, and fosters a strong learning environment. Also joining us this week is another reporter, Emily. Emily wrote about the grants given to four startup companies with ties to Cal Lutheran by the Dorfman Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. What is the Dorfman Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship and what does it do? The Stephen Dorfman Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship serves both students, faculty, alumni, and the greater community. It's dedicated to the study and the practice of innovation and entrepreneurship in both academic and real world settings according to their page on MyCLU. Why is this center important and what is its importance to Cal Lutheran? The center is important to Cal Lutheran because they teach the latest techniques to undergraduate students, to graduate students, or to anyone else involved in the center and their programs and events. What the startup ecosystem is like and how to support them kind of navigating through that. Can you tell us a little bit about the application process? According to Gerhard Apfelter, even if you're not affiliated with CLU, you don't go here, you don't work in the community, um, anyone can apply. And he detailed the rigorous process in place of how recipients were chosen, but how applicants can apply is there's an application through a web portal where applicants have to address certain questions and also provide pitch decks. This year, they received a total of 22 eligible applications. Once those are all submitted, then a subcommittee of advisory council screens these applications, and once they do so, they kind of start to narrow down who will be awarded these grants through certain criteria like what the business model is, what the viability is, also what qualities the teams that run these startups have. And that's how they kind of narrow down the applicants to finally come to a decision on who will be rewarded these grants. What startups are receiving the grants and why did they apply? I had the pleasure of speaking with three out of the four people who received this year's grant. And I'll just go ahead and list them. First is Joshua Janik. He is the founder of A Fox and His Robot, which is a video game that is set to release um, on Steam and Nintendo Switch in the upcoming months. There's no release date yet, but um, we will see that soon. The second person I talked to was Sabbath Khan, who is a professor at CLU. He is in public policy and administration. He co-founded Talali Pani with his wife, Fabiola Lara. Um, It's a social enterprise that works with artisans around the world and kind of helps to take out any middlemen between the artisans who make what they make and the consumer who buys them um, in order to give those artisans as much profit as they can rather than everyone else who is kind of the middleman. 
And then finally, I talked to Christian Masigan. He is a Cal Lutheran alum, and he created modern football technology to help solve business problems of football coaches through an analytics program that provides live historical and self-scout tendency analytics. When I asked um, these three entrepreneurs why they applied for the Dorfman grant, both Joshua Janik and Christian Masigan, they both said that they would use the funding to market their products and their startup ventures as they are nearing their release dates and their launch dates um, to kind of get the word out there to potential consumers that will use their product. As for Sabbath Khan, Talali Pani is going to use the grant money as just general funding. He explained to me how he has been kind of bootstrapping in a way that he has been investing his own money in this business venture and so the grant would really help a lot. What does the Dorfman Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship hope to come out of the Dorfman Incubator Grants? Gerhard Appelfler also explained to me that the Dorfman Center hopes that there are sort of long-term and short-term positive effects from these grants. The first one is that these people who receive the grants, they are somewhat obligated to provide educational value to our entrepreneurship education at Cal Lutheran and this can be in various ways providing internships, providing guest speakers for classes, mentoring students, something along those lines that actively directly affects Cal Lutheran students but there are secondary long-term effects which are increased visibility and attractiveness for our programs within the greater community, the entrepreneurship and the startup community. In the long run I think I think Gerhard explained that they're hoping that some of the awarded startups will be very success successful and not forget who helped them out when they were first getting started. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Look out for another podcast from us soon.